Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Resuming with Kitab al-Thalith from Kutub al-Madina Book 3 of Medina Book Series and this is our third session inshallah and before we resume from where we left off in the booklet once again to remind of the importance of learning the Arabic grammar. The Arabic grammar, it is extremely important. The Salaf al-Salih, as we mentioned, كَانُوا يُؤَدِّبُونَ أَوْلَادُهُمْ عَلَى اللَّحَنِ They would discipline their children if they were, were to make grammatical errors in their speech. For verily they say, the one who learns about different sciences of the religion, he learns about hadith, fiqh, وَلَا يَتَعَلَّمَ النَّحْوُ and he doesn't learn nahu. مِثْلْ الْبُرْنُسْ لَا رَأْسَ لَا It's like an empty hood with no head therein. What is the benefit of that? So it means that you're not really making use as much of the hadith and fiqh as you want to until you have the Arabic grammar. It opens so much doors of understanding of fellow brothers. So not only does it help with the comprehension of the Quran and the Sunnah, but as well it's a form of beauty and iqama to lisan to make uh, your, the structure and how you compose your words and the best of presentation. So you're going to see that nahu, it relates to how you compose your sentences and also how you combine certain words with one another. All of this is uh, critical for the science. And it's also, it saves you the embarrassment, they say. It saves you the embarrassment of not knowing Arabic grammar. You find that the one who doesn't know Arabic grammar He's taken by embarrassment when he speaks. And there's many examples to that. Even we can relate personally. Uh, and even when you're going to present your questions to the scholars, you see that it's extremely important to know Arabic grammar. I will write, relay some incidents of just how why a person uh, may need it even when asking scholars questions. We find a lot of the questions that are written to, to the ulama, uh, they're lacking Arabic grammar and even may have an impact on how the sheikh understands the question. So here is an incident commonly shared that a man went to Hassan al-Basri. فَقَالَ مَا تَقُولُ فِي رَجُلٍ تَرَكَ أَبِيهِ وَأَخِيهِ Pay attention to these words. A man came to Hassan al basri and said, what do you say concerning a man who passed away and left his father and his brother? But the wording that he used, grammatically that's not understood. He said, أَبِيهِ وَأَخِيهِ He's supposed to say, أَبَاهُ وَأَخَاهُ فَقَالْ حَسَنْ تَرَكَ أَبَاهُ وَأَخَاهُ he passed away leaving behind a father and a brother. He's inquiring now. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلْ فَمَا لِأَبَاهُ وَأَخَاهُ So the man, he didn't understand. Because he doesn't know Arabic grammar. He says, what share does the father, أَبَاهُ and أَخَاهُ get? So now he also confused. And made it even more of a complex situation. فَقَالَ الْحَسَنْ فَمَا لِأَبِيهِ وَأَخِيهِ So Hassan al-Basri also inquires in a way in a, with a light correction. What is the share for, your, for his father and his brother? So the man, he got frustrated and he said, أَرَانِي كُلَّمَا كَلَّمْتُكَ خَالَفْتَنِي He says, I see that every time I say something to you, 
you say the opposite. And little does he understand that the actual person is seeking clarity for the fatwa. For verily, the way you compose your words and present them and pronounce it with vowels have an impact on what you get of an answer. And it can be really harmful even relating to how you recite words of the Quran or you change certain things or ascribe certain actions to Allah. So Arabic grammar is crucial, fellow brothers. And also it has side benefits to it. They said Yazidu fil aql. It sharpens the mind. Arabic grammar sharpens the mind. Wallah, we found those who've devoted themselves and engaged into learning Arabic grammar, they've increased in intelligence, or meaning they have strengthened their intelligence. It sharpens the mind. So throughout the, these classes, you're going to find that a lot of it has to do with brainstorming and understanding and using the mind. There's no, uh, like some of the fiqh classes or hadith classes, you can just probably you know, not pay attention a bit in the class and still have a general understanding. Every grammar, every moment, you, you have, your mind has to be with you. You can't be absent-minded, as they say. Tayyip, resuming from where we left off, on page Safhat uh, al page number eight, Or number four, al-rabi' jam'u al-mudhakkar al-salim. Jam'u al-mudhakkar al-salim. So just to remind, we're in the, the categories where i'rab, the sign of i'rab, is not the origin uh, sign. We're dealing with alamat far'iyah. So substitute signs. And just to give a recap on that, inshallah, because Arabic grammar, we constantly need to repeat. Constantly need to repeat and remind ourselves of what was taken prior. So I'm going to mention a couple of pointers from last class. Number one, the primary ending case, which means alamat asliya, for the sign of a word having the grammatical position of being marfu' is by having a dhamma vowel ala akhiri for its ending case. So now we're speaking about the previous class where the primary ending case, which is a sign that indicates the grammatical position of the word, whether it be marfu' or mansub or majroor. So the origin, for example, for marfu' is having a dhamma vowel, ala akhiri, for its ending case. Number two, the primary ending case, alamat asriya, for the sign of a word having the grammatical position of being mansub, is by having a fatha vowel, ala akhiri, for its ending case. So these are primary ending cases, meaning these are the original signs for these grammatical positions that you can identify them by way of. Number three, the primary ending case, alamat asriya, for the sign of a word having the grammatical position of being majroor, is by having a kasra vowel ala akhiri for its ending case. Note, if a word has a tanween on it, then in that case it will be two dhammas when it's marfu'a. Two fathas when it's mansub, and two kasras when it's majroor. So, speaking generally, we're talking it has a, a dhamma vowel, or a kasra vowel, or a fatha vowel. But if the word has a tanween on it, then it, it, it becomes a double the amount, so it becomes two dhammas, two fathas, and two kasras. This is to bear in mind. Because some of the times when people are learning Arabic grammar, they don't understand why 
There's a two, two dhammas at a time, and then there's one dhamma at a time. So it's very important. Once we understand why a word uh, has one vowel at a time and another time two vowels, we can distinguish between the two. So then we spoke about alamat far'iya. So this is the opposite now. We spoke the original signs that you can identify a word by. And then we spoke about substitute signs or what branches off from that. They call them second case, ending case or secondary uh, ending case. So it can be vowels and also it can be letters. But they're substitute the original sign. They're niyaba as they say. And from those nouns, those asma that have these substitute signs, alamat far'iya, we're taking jam mu'annath as-salim. And these signs, they can take on some substitute signs partially, not entirely. I mean, in certain scenarios only. For example, Jammu and Salim, when does it have alamatun far'iya? When does it have alamatun far'iya? When it relates to the grammatical position of it having nasb or being mansub. Because the sign of it being mansub is a kasra instead of a fatha. So niyabatan is a substitute. So when you're pronouncing the sentence, for example, khalaqallahu as-samawati wal-arda. So going back to page 7, brothers. Khalaqallahu, number 1. Khalaqallahu as-samawati wal-arda. So khalaqa is a verb, a past tense verb. Fi'il mazi. Allah, lafzul jalala, the lofty name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in the position of fa'il as the actor of the verb. So it takes a dhamma here on the original sign, alama to asliya. As-samawati. As-samawati. As-samawati is what we refer to as being maf'ul and bihi. That the verb has stretched its effect towards this noun or the verb has uh, acted upon. So now we know that this is mansub, and the original sign for something, a noun that is mansub, is to take a fatha. But here, it has a substitute sign. It has alamatun far'iya. What is the substitute sign here? Because it's jam mu'annat salim, it's a jam, which is a, a plural. Al mu'annat, a feminine plural. A salim, a, that it sound feminine plural, so it's free from being broken from its original format. I Meaning the original word of a singular is still somewhat intact in its original position. So we've taken this in the previous class, but just to repeat here, because it's it's jamu an salim when it's in the grammatical position of be mansub. It takes a alamatun far'iya. It doesn't take alamat asliya. It takes a substitute sign to identify that it's mansub. Not the original sign, the primary ending case uh, of it having a fatha. So here it's to take secondary case, which is in this position, a kasra. So it would be grammatically uh, incorrect to read the ayah as khalaqallahu as samawata. You say, Khalaqallahu as samawati with a kasra on the noun, wal arda. So now going back to today's lesson, page uh, eight, brothers, uh, number four, Jam'u al Mudakkar as Salim. Al Rabi'ah, number four. So the word Jam, what does Jam mean? Plural. Al Mudakkar, what does Mudakkar mean? Masculine. Al Mudakkar, with a shadda on the calf. Al Salim, what does the Salim mean? 
the which is sound. Sound. What does it mean sound? It is free. Salimat surat mufradihi min taksir The original format of the singular word, the structure of it. Salima. It has become free. It's sound from any breakup. It's still, there's no change. A lot in the vowels of it. It's not a lot of change in additional wordings. So much that change it from the original format. It was just an increase. Biziyadat wa wa noon. Oh yeah, wa noon. Jim Mudakir Salam. The only increase that he should have from his original format of the singular word is a wow and a noon or ya yeah and a noon. Let's give some examples. The word Muslimun. Muslimun. The word Muslimun. If we want to pluralize this word and to make it Jammu Zakir Salim, a plural that is masculine sound, we're just going to add a wow and a noon at the end of it. We're going to say Muslimun, Muslimuna. We're going to say Muslimun, and then we're going to add a wow and a noon. So it's going to become Muslimun, Muslimuna. Inshallah, maybe in the future we want to probably sit over there just to demonstrate further. So with the wow and the noon, the additional of these two letters, it becomes Jammu Dhakr Salim or an increase of a ya and a noon, and we'll clarify when it will be this and it will be that. For example, Muslimun, Muslimina. Muslimun, Muslimina. So we just added a ya and a noon at the end of it, and it became Jammu Dhakr Salim. So when we say Muslimuna, is it a jam or is it a mufrad? Is it a plural or is it a singular? It's a jam. Muslimuna because it indicates ma dalla ala akthar min isnain. It indicates in two, more than two individuals. That's the meaning of jam. Indicates in more than two individuals. Al mudakkar is it masculine? Yes, it's masculine. In reference to, this is the plural of Muslimun, not Muslimatun. It's the plural of male Muslim. Asalim, Asalim, meaning that the original format of the word, it is Salim. It's free from taksir, free from being broken up. The structure of this is still Muslimun, Muslimun. Is it still readable? Or can you still read? Uh, the word Muslimun and Muslimuna, yes, you can still read it. It's still somewhat there and intact in its position, so that's the meaning of it. Tayyib, is this, does it's Arab, there's a grammatical positioning of it when it's marfu' or mansub or majroor. Does it have alamat far'iyya or alamat asliya? Do they have primary ending case or secondary ending case? How do we identify? We say in, in all of its scenarios, كُلُّ alamat fihi فِيهِ All of the distinctive signs found therein are substitute signs, secondary ending case. So this is entirely. The other one for Jammu and Salim was partially. Partially. But this one is entirely in all of its grammatical positions. It has alamat far'iyya. So before taking the examples, we want to take further the definition of jam al mudakkar al-salim. Because you know, when, once we go over and over a definition of a word, it becomes somewhat easier to understand it. So Jam al Mudakkar al Salim, as we mentioned, who kulluma dalla ala akthar min isnaini. 
It is every thing that indicates to more than two individuals that are males. More than two indi male individuals. بزيادة الواو المضموم ما قبلها with an additional increase of a wow to its singular. المضموب ما قبلها but this wow has a ضمة before it. So the vowel of it should have a ضمة. So the letter before the wow should have a ضمة. For example, مسلمون the meme that's before the wow. It has a dhamma. وَنُونُ عَلَى مُفْرَدِهِ فِي حَالَةَ الرَّفْءِ أو زيادة الواو المكسور ما قبلها والنون في حالة الجر والنصب. So basically, if with an additional increase of a wow that has a dhamma before it, alongside an additional increase of a noon. So these two letters are additional. And this is when it's in the grammatical position of being marfu'a. So whenever Jammu Zakir Salim is in the grammatical position of being marfu'a, it has an increase of a wow and a noon. But when it's majroor and mansub, when the grammatical position of being majroor and mansub, it has ziyadat al wow al maksur ma qablaha wa noon. It has a, a kasra with a kasra with what brothers? Sorry, it has a ya with a kasra before it. So it has an increase, additional increase of a ya and a kasra before it, alongside a noon. So you say in that scenario, muslimina. Muslimina. The ya has a kasra before it or doesn't? It has a kasra before it. Muslimina. So in that scenario. Now back to the book. Al-Waw. So what is the sign of Jammu Dhakir Salim being marfu'a? It says Al-Waw. Al-Waw. So here, we're going to take this example. He says, Nahu. What does Nahu mean? Mithil. For, like for example. Dakhala al-mudarrisuna. Dakhala al-mudarrisuna. So dakhala is a past tense verb for al-madi. Al-mudarrisuna. This is in the position of being the fa'il. The act of the verb, which is marfu'a, which is, it takes the grammatical position of being marfu'a. But what's the sign of it being marfu'a, O fellow brothers? What is the sign of al-mudarrisuna being marfu'a? Here it says al-waw. So we have al-mudarris. Suna al Suna. So that wow there, it is the sign for this word of Jamma Dakir Salim being Marfu'a. Tayyib Alamatul Nasb Aliyah. Alamatul Nasbi Aliyah. Next one. So the sign of Jamma Dakir Salim. Being in a grammatical position of Imansub is that its secondary ending case is a ya. It has a letter substituting the original sign, which is a fatha. Nahu sa'al tu, for example, sa'al tu, I asked. So this is a combination between fi'il wa fa'il, the act and the actor. Sa'al tu. Al-Mudarrisina, Al-Mudarrisina, the teachers. I asked the teachers. Sa'altu Al-Mudarrisina. So the first one is Dakhla Al-Mudarrisina, the teachers entered. Now this one is Sa'altu Al-Mudarrisina, I asked the teachers. So the, the act of asking landed upon what word? Al-Mudarrisina. So it becomes Maf'ul Bihi. So with maf'ul and bi, what is his grammatical position? Mansub. And the original sign for it is to have a fatah. But here it has a, a ya as a alamatu far'iyah, substitute sign. 
replacing its original sign because this word is jam mudakir salam. That's the reason. Alamatul jar al ya. Alamatul jar al ya. Brothers, uh, Arabic grammar could be overwhelming. It's one of the hardest subjects. Not many people uh, have the endurance and the perseverance to be patient upon it, especially it requires a lot of concentration. It's not like the class that we've taken of sarf. Sarf, uh, some things you're not uh, fully there or you missed. Yeah, you can still be one that catches up. But Arabic grammar, it requires a lot of concentration. Your mind can start floating and start thinking about things during the class. You have to be focused. The moment your mind starts floating elsewhere, that's where you start uh, uh, getting confused and more confused. You have to, and it's, it's a science that they say is muaqqad, it's very complicated, especially the beginning of it. Arabic grammar, the first part of it is hard. Wallahi, many times I want to walk out the class of the Arabic grammar class that I was studying because of the complications that I was finding at the very beginning. And if you think you're in a math class of all these terminologies and these technical terms, and you just feel like you just need a textbook, and but this requires a lot of patience. Alamatul الْجَرِّ الْيَا So when Jam Muzakir Salim is in the grammatical position of Bimajurur, fi halat al-jar, then its sign is ayya as this alama for ayya substitute sign because the original sign for jar is a kasra right alama tasliya nahu for example hadihi ghurfatu al mudarrisina hadihi this so this is ism ishara They say demonstrative uh, pronoun for singular feminine. Hazihi. Ghurfa tu. Ghurfa is a room. So now there it's demonstrating or pointing towards a room. And that's, a, uh, it's near in its proximity or it's near in its location. Ghurfa tu mudarrisina. Al-Mudarrisina, here it is in the position of being majroor, because we said the mudaf ilay, whenever you see mudaf, mudaf ilay, the second word of the mudaf, mudaf ilay, the two words made it to, to one word, it's always in the position of being majroor, taking the sign of majroor. And the sign for here, it is, ya, yeah, as a substitute sign, because it's jamma dhakr salim. So the meaning of this, this is the room for the teachers. The teacher's lounge or the room. Teacher's lounge. A lot of times when, when you're translating, you're looking, you find flaws in people's translations and a lot of things. A lot of times it goes back to them not completely understanding the grammatical positioning of the word. So when they don't understand the grammatical positioning of the word, they don't give it the best translation that it deserves. So you find a lot of flaws. You find people, they translated huge books, published them, and brought them out, and then you look, and you compare them to the Arabic, you find a lot of flaws. Because it was not proofread in comparison to the rules of the Arabic grammar. So these has to be, because they're there to make you understand the actual positioning of the word. That's the Arab brothers. They moving on. If, before we move on, any questions? Huh? You want to take this? Keep this with you, brothers, inshallah. If you could uh, explain Sha'al to again. Tayyib. So going back to. Sa'altu, we said it is a combination with fi'il wa fa'il. 
What's the meaning of that, O oh, fellow brothers? So this is a verb with the act of the verb combined, brought together. So the original word is sa'ala, past tense verb, sa'ala. Sa'ala. But now we brought a pronoun. A pronoun for damir al first person. Pronoun for first person as I. And we joined it, we emerged it with the verb, and it became sa'altu. I asked. So the asked is still there, but we just added the I to it. So that too is in that position of I. So here we say, when we do in the Iraq, sa'altu fi'il wa fa'il. It's a verb with the act of the verb. So we merge them together. A pronoun, a first person, damir mutakallim, damir muttasil. That's in the position of fa'il. That two there is in the position. Fi mahal raf'in, fa'il. It's in the position of being the actor of the verb. Any other questions? Any other questions that we have taken? With the Arabic grammar, you have to ask a lot of questions. There has to be a lot of interactions, engagement. You have to ask a lot of questions. It's very important. If you find that something confusing, you could uh, ask and seek clarity. Could you also say that sa'ala is the uh, the fi'al and tu is the the, the, the ta is the fa'il? No, you can say that. So you can say uh, the first part sa'al is the fi'il maldi, and the tu is the fa'il. If you want to do that, or you can just say sa'al tu fi'il wa fa'il. And it's good to quiz each other on doing irab at times. Arabic grammar, uh, its learning process is of two. The theory process and the practical process. So you're going to find that a lot of times there's a lot of theory. We're giving out certain technical definitions, this, the meaning of this, the meaning of that. And then at times we're just going to ask you, break down this sentence grammatically. What positioning is this word? You have to quiz each other and test each other. That's the practical process. So you have to prepare yourself for both process. The theory process, where I give you a lot of definitions, the meanings of them, uh, notes, and then also the tatbiq, where we do the irab, we do the practical process. I'm saying now, what is dakhala? Identify it. You have to be able to identify it. So we're going to quiz each other. And these books have been written on both processes, the practical process and also the theory process. And there's different teachers. Some teachers that you may study Arabic grammar with, he may prefer, prefer the pro approach, the, the theor theoretical approach, where he gives you so much uh, notes and definitions. And then there's some who may prefer the practical process. He's teaching you more with exercise, quizzes, demonstrations, because his main goal is just for you to be able to practically uh, demonstrate what is being uh, taught. The next one, Al-Khamis, Al-Muthanna. Al-Khamis, Al-Muthanna. Back to the page. Al-Muthanna, it means the dual, Al-Muthanna. Kullu al-alamati فيه فرعية بارك الله فيك حفظك الله كل العلامات فيه فرعية all of the distinctive signs therein of the grammatical position it is substitute signs it's فرعية it's branched off it's not the primary ending case the علامة أصلية وهي and it is علامة الرف الأليف وَهِيَ عَلَامَةُ الرَّفْءَ الْأَلِفُ So when it's in the grammatical position be marfu' what is the sign for it? Instead of the original sign, which is the dhamma, it takes the sign 
نيابه الاليف as a substitute sign the alif نحو for example غاب طالباني غاب طالباني so غاب is a past tense verb for الماضي طالباني it is the dual form here which is the act of the verb the fa'il so now we have a verb sentence right fi'il wa fa'il talibani and we know the fa'il its grammatical position in the sentence is to be marfu' right so what's the sign of it being marfu' here it is the alif talibani the alif at the end this is a secondary ending case so it's the sign for the arab of being marfu' substituting the dhamma so both students were absent that's the meaning of it ghaba talibani medina books we're not really focusing on the meaning of words uh, this and kind of vocabulary and such is not the main goal our main goal is just to understand these principles these principles so don't feel don't feel like you uh, if you don't know a meaning of a word uh, you're missing out from the lesson no the, the meaning of the words are irrelevant at the moment it's just to know the grammatical positioning of them طيب علامة نصب الياء نحو for example طلب المدير طالبين the principal requested for two students Okay, now we have يعني فعل طلبة ماضي past tense المدير the فاعل the actor of the verb and طالبين and the, that which has been acted upon meaning the effect of the verb طلبة landed on what word? طالبين it's the مفعول be here now because it landed upon it that's the meaning of مفعول be and the مفعول be what's its sign? What's its positioning? To be mansub. Its grammatical positioning is mansub. And the sign for it is al ya. Why is the sign for it al ya? Because it's substituting the original sign, which is fatah, because this word is muthanna, dual. Because all of this grammatical positioning in it has substitute signs. Alamutul jarri al ya. Moving on. So the sign for a word. Being majuror is al ya also. Um, this is a bit confusing now. If the mansub was ya, and also now majuror is ya. So, how do we identify them now? To say which one's mansub and which one's majuror by the context of the sentence, by siyak, they say. So, nahu, for example, hadhi al ghurfatu, this room, so a dem- demonstrative pronoun, hadhi. للقريب so something that's near and singular and feminine right الغرفة so this room so we know he's speaking about something of near range للطالبيني or for two students or for two students and look at the word we say لطالبيني look لطالبيني we say for two students we didn't say for two or to the students or or making a definite word it's just two students who are these students we don't know so make sure when you translate you translate correctly there's no alif and lam there basically there's no alif and lam there's just a, a, a word saying li for Two students. So now this word, لطالبيني, it has a harf jar, which is the li here, the lam, entering upon this noun. And what's the impact? That it makes it majurur. It makes it the grammatical position of being majurur. And what's the sign for it? For being majurur, when it's muthanna, when it's dual, it has a ya, substituting the original sign, a kasra. طيب moving on for fellow brothers الإعراب التقديري أو الإعراب التقديري 
So now we spoke about Al-Irab al-Zahir. Previous lesson was about Al-Irab al-Zahir. Like whenever we're doing the Irab of these things, we'll say, وَعَلَامَةُ رَفْعِهِ أَضْضَمَّةُ الظَّاهِرَةً وَعَلَامَةُ رَفْعِهِ وَعَلَامَةُ نَصْبِهِ الْفَتْحَةُ الظَّاهِرَةً وَعَلَامَةُ جَرِّهِ الْكَسْرَةُ الظَّاهِرَةً We're always speaking about an apparent vowel that's manifest, it's clear, it's noticeable. So we're speaking about this before. So some Arab is noticeable, Zahira, and some Arab is unnoticeable. So now we're going to speak about the Arab that is Taqdiri, unnoticeable. So this is, mashallah, we're shifting to another section in Nahu. And this is all crucial as a muqaddima, as an introduction before moving on. So the Arab Taqdiri, you the Arab that is based upon estimation, since the actual Arab is not noticeable, this is the topic now. He says, لا تظهر علامات العراب. The distinctive signs for Arab of the grammatical position of a word are not apparent. لا تظهر, it's not apparent. في ثلاثة أنواع in three types. من الأسماء from the nouns فتقدر therefore ف فتقدر تقدر it's estimated that means it's given it an estimation because you can't notice it you're gonna give it a rough an an estimation of what grammatical positioning does it deserve so you say, even though it's not noticeable I can't notice it I'm gonna do a تقدير I'm going to give it an estimated ruling. That's the meaning of taqdeer of brothers. Because someone may ask you, why do you say this is marfu'ah? You can't even see the signs at the end of it. You tell them, no, I did a taqdeer. I did irab al-taqdeeri. I gave it an estimated ruling of what grammatical position it is. And I mentioned also the reason why the actual sign for that grammatical position not to be apparent and there's certain reasons that we're going to take. فَتُقَدِّرْ فِيهَا الْعَلَامَاتِ So the signs are given even an estimated uh, ruling. وَهَذِهِ الْعَنْوَاعُ وَهَذِهِ الْعَنْوَاعُ And these types, I, these three aforementioned types, here, here, uh, we can translate them as it, but it means here, they are. A lot of times, in Arabic, uh, when you're referring to things of that are non-intellect or objects, columns and these type of things, you refer to them in singular form. Here, huwa, it, in other words. But even in English, we'll translate as they are. Al-maqsuru. So the first noun, the first type. Al-maqsuru. What is Al-Maqsuru, brothers? We're going to take this. It's going to come, inshallah. Just bear, uh, bear with us. The tech, uh, definition is going to come for each one. Wal-Manqusu. So it's the second type. Wal-Mudafu ila ya'i al-Mutakallim. Wal-Mudafu ila ya'i al-Mutakallim. And the word that has been given the positioning of mudaf. I remember we mentioned the word, that's two words to make one word. So the first word is called mudaf, the second word is called mudaf ilay. So it's been at, at the first word, is a, a word that's mudaf, but the second word, it is a ya. Yeah. Al-Mutakallim. What is Ya Mutakallim, my fellow brothers? Ya is a pronoun for the Mutakallim. What does it mean Mutakallim? First person. First person. So it's a pronoun for first person, meaning me. An equivalent to English has me. So Ya Mutakallim, if you find a word, it's in the positioning of 
mudaf and mudaf ilayh. But the second word is a first person pronoun as ya mutakallim. Then this has a specific ruling which we're going to take, inshallah. Then we're going to take the definition of each. So page number nine. Tasya. Yeah. So the first one, al maqsuru al maqsuru So now we're taking three types of nouns that have uh, irab taqdiri. Why does it have irab taqdiri? Estimated ruling of irab. Because these tri- types of nouns, the irab, the signs of irab found therein, it's not zahir. It's not noticeable. It's muqaddar, it's unnoticeable. So because it's unnoticeable, we need to understand these three types of nouns and why they're in this positioning. Al-Maqsuru. There's a noun called Ism al-Maqsur. What do you say? Al-Maqsuru. Huwa al-Ismu al-Mu'rabu al-Ladhi akhiruhu alifun lazimatun nahu al-Mustashfa al-Fata Al-Asa. So Al-Maqsur, Al-Maqsur, this is a noun that it says, who al ismu it's a noun. Al-Mu'rabu, that it's Mu'rab. Uh, it's not Mabni, so it's uh, declinable. It's open for change. الَّذِي آخِرُهُ أَلِيفٌ لَازِمًا However, it's a noun that is ending, which الَّذِي آخِرُهُ The ending of it is أَلِيفٌ An alif لَازِمَةٌ That is adherent to it. It sticks to it. And this is what we refer to as like a broken alif. You know that broken alif that's written in a ya form? This is like what it's referring to here. Or it could be an actual alif standing. Uh, The main thing is that it's an alif at the end of the word that's always there. It's part of the word. Nahu, for example, al-mustashfa, the hospital. Al-fata, the young man. Al-asa, the, the stick. So the alif at the end of these words, it's called alifun lazima. It tells them al-kalima. It adheres to this word. And why was it, this word given the title as maqsur? They say it was sumi al-maqsur لأنه محبوس عن المد it's, it's a word مقصور linguistically means something that's محبوس something that's restrained and it comes even in the word uh, describing this, the wives for the people in Jannah that there are Maqsurat, you know, that they are uh, confined and restrained just for their husbands. So here, al maqsur is that there is a confined word. It's restrained from having a mad. So this word doesn't have a mad, basically. Some say that's the reason why it was called Muqsur. The meaning of like mud, like the mud, uh, like Isam al Mamdud, al Ashya, with the Hamza, right? Or some of them say the reason why it's called uh, Muqsur. Because it's confined and restrained from ha- from its Arab to become apparent. So 
linguistically. So when you understand the meaning of a word linguistically, you can understand it technically. They go hand in hand. And so, lugatan wa stilaha. So both linguistically and technically have some sort of connection. That this word, it is restricted, basically, from showing its sign of i'rab. So, tuqaddaru fihi al-alamatu al-thalathu. So back to the book. Tuqaddar. So there then, we know that being that the Arab is not apparent, we have to give an estimated ruling of the signs of its Arab and in all three scenarios. So Marfu' al thalath for Marfu' for Mansub and Majroor. Nahu, for example, Qatala al Fata al Afa bil Asa. Qatala al Fata al Afa bil Asa. Oh, this is a tough one, brothers. Qatala, past tense verb, fi'l mazi. Al fata. We don't even can't even see the sign of the, the alamat irab here. Right? Al fata. And we but we know it's in the positioning of being the fa'il, the actor of the verb. And we know the fa'il is marfu'a. So there then we give it an estimated ruling. We say uh it is fa'il marfu' wa alamatu raf'ihi. Alamatu raf'ihi, the sign of it being marfu' is al-dhamma. Al-dhamma. Muqaddara. Al-dhamma, that's unnoticeable. SubhanAllah. Where's the dhamma there? You say it's dhamma muqaddara. A dhamma there? There's a dhamma there, but it's unnoticeable. Meaning it's. Uh, couldn't become apparent. What prevented what's maladi mana'a min zuhuriha? What prevented it from becoming apparent? We say a ta'adhur. The person asks you, what's the reason why the dhamma couldn't show? Why couldn't it be noticeable? Why is it unnoticeable? Why do we have to give an estimated ruling? Say mana'a min zuhuriha a ta'adhur. What prevented its appearance and its showing and become noticeable? It is Ta'adhur. You have to memorize these wordings. Ta'adhur. What does ta'adhur mean? Ta'adhur means that it was improperable. In other words, impossible. Like, how can you pronounce the dhamma in this circumstance? Try to pronounce the dhamma here. You can't. You cannot pronounce the dhamma with <laughs> this positioning. And at the same time, you cannot pronounce two vowels at the same time. Two different vowels. Fatha and Dhamma. So here they say, Ta'adhur, you're excused, in other words. What prevented it from being apparent is that you have an excuse. It's, it's improper. al afa So afa we know, it's in the position of being maf'ul and bihi. The act of qatala, killing, landed upon what word? Al Afa, so it's the Maf'ul and Bihi. So in other words, it was killed. And Al Afa is the cobra. So we know that Maf'ul and Bihi is Mansub. So what's the Arab of it? We say it's Mansub, the grammatical position, and the sign of it Mansub is Awalamutu Nasbihi Fatha. The sign of it be Mansub is Fatha. But we say muqaddara wa alamat nasbihi fatha muqaddara a fatha that's unnoticeable or a fatha that we have given it as an estimated fatha. And then we say mana'a min zuhuriha what prevented it from becoming noticeable and and shown and appearing at ta'adhur you need to be able to explain why a word Zerab is not showing at times and at times it is, you have to be able to explain this. This is your job. Al Afa, we say it Mansub wa alamat nasbihi fatha muqaddara. Man amid zuhuriha at ta'adhur. Okay, moving on to the next word. Bil asa. Bil asa. So B here, this is a harf, it's a letter, harf jar. 
particle that makes an impact on the noun after they're making it, majurur. And we know the sign of majurur is a kasra, but here it's not noticeable because there's an alif lazima, there's an alif at the end of it that's preventing, right? So we say, bil al asa majurur wa alama tujarrihi al kasra al muqaddara. Asa, it is majurur, and the sign of majurur is a kasra that is muqaddara, unnoticeable or estimated. Estimated. And then we say, Mana amin dhuhuriha, what prevented it from being seen and noticeable and being noticed? It is a ta'adhur. Mana amin dhuhuriha, ta'adhur. That it's improbable. It's, you're excused here. You can't. Because it already has an alif and it's a. You cannot pronounce another vowel here. So he says, Taqulu, you would say, Fi irab, in the irab, هذه الكلمات of these words الفتى فاعل المرفوع علامة رفعه ضمة مقدرة ما شاء الله الأفعى مفعول به منصوب علامة نصبه فتحة مقدرة ما شاء الله taking this way العصا مجرور بالباء يعني you have to mention what made it مجرور Right? And it makes it majrur. And just I'm going to mention a humorous incident of uh, this topic of a word. Because here it says majrurun bilba. So al asa, there has to be a harf jar to make it majrur. And for us to say that it's majrur, we can't just say it by ourselves. There has to be a, a, something that is jarra, something that makes it majrur. And they mention an incident that some of the mushayikh mentioned this uh, story. A man went up to uh, another and asked him, "Ma fa'ala abuka bihimari?" And what did your father do bihimari uh, with his donkey? Then he said, فَقَالَ بَاعِي He sold it. فَقِيلَ لَهُ قُلْتَ بَاعِي And this shows you the importance of every grammar for this. He says, he says فَقِيلَ لَهُ لِمَا قُلْتَ Why did you say بَاعِي? Why did you say بَاعِي? When you're supposed to say بَاعَهُ Right? So, he, uh, and then he said to him, this is a response of someone who doesn't know Arabic grammar, he said, why did you say bihimari? <laughs> and then the man, he, he responded by saying, I made it majroor with the ba <laughs> of bihimari, right? So the other person responded by saying, why does your ba, <laughs> oh, why does your ba, makes it majuru and my bad doesn't, right? So let's see the example here. And he doesn't understand that the first one, bihimari, is a harf jar. The other one, ba'ahu, is the actual ba part of the word. Because he didn't know better. He doesn't know the difference between an actual word and harf jar. So here we said, al-asa majurur bil ba. Al-asa is majurur bil ba. Right? Alama tujarrihi kasratun muqaddara. That's what you mentioned. Type number two, al-manqusu. Huwa al-ismu al-mu'rabu. Al-ladhi akhiruhu ya'un lazima. Wa ya'un lazima. Maksurun ma qablaha. This is uh, the prints of Medina books are really uh, and brought together. Some of them are not the best prints. So I don't know, maybe this is based on the typo. Maksurun ma qablaha nahu al qadi al muhami al thani al mali al wadi al maani. 
type. So let's take this quickly. Al manqus. So this is another type of noun that the Arab they're in is unnoticeable. It's muqaddar. Huwa al ismu. It's a noun. Al muarab. That's not mabni. It's declinable. Al ladi akhiruhu. That which that is ending is ya lazima. Ya that is adherent to it. Maksurun ma qablaha. But this ya has it has to be a type to have this type of definition that the, it has a kasra before it. Because there are types of words that have a, a, a ya at the end of it, but it does have a kasra of it, so it doesn't take this definition. Nahu, for example, al qadi, the judge. Al muhami, the lawyer. Al thani, the second. Al madi, the past. Al wadi, the valley. Al ma'ani, the meanings. Right? Then why was this word, this noun, given the title as manqus? A lot of the grammarians, the Nuhat, they say the reason why this word is given the term manqus, is identified with the title manqus. Manqus literally means something deficient. And it's something that there's somewhat miss a letter missing from it. It says the reason why it's called manqus because at times when a tanween enters upon this word, the the last letter, which is the lamb of the word, the last letter, which is the yeah in this position, it is erased. And you start pronounce it as qadin. Instead of saying qadi, you say qadin. Instead of saying da'i, you say da'in. So that's why it's called manqus. Because at times it's, it has a deficient letter. In some of its uh, grammatical circumstances. طيب تقدر فيه الضمة والكسرة وتظهر فيه الفتحة نحو سأل القاضي so he says to qaddar that you give therein fihi therein an estimated ruling for the dhamma he says the dhamma wal kasra so he's basically saying there's an estimated dhamma there an estimated kasra there wa tadharu fihi al fatha but the fatha shows its apparent. So when it comes to being mansub and has a fatha, for example, we say here it is zahira. zahira. The fatha there is noticeable because you can pronounce it. Why does the fatha show but the dhamma and the kasra doesn't show? They say fatha the khiffatiha. Fatha is more light on the tongue in comparison to the rest of the vowels here. وَتَظْهَرُ فِيهِ الْفَتْحَ نَحُو For example, سَأَلَ الْقَاضِي The judge asked. So سَأَلَ is a verb sentence. This past sentence verb. سَأَلَ فِي الْمَاضِي and قَاضِي فَعِل So we know that فَعِل is مرفوع. القاضي. So what's علامة رفعه? We see علامة رفعه. The sign of being مرفوع is an estimated dhamma. Why didn't it show? What prevented it from showing? A thiqal, they say. Because it's heavy. The dhamma here, it is heavy. That's what prevented it. So a person asks you, why does it show here? Why can I say Sa'al al Qadiyu? Why can I say Sa'al al Qadiyu? Because that's taqil. The Arabs they don't like that which is heavy on their tongues. They would always avoid tongue twisters and heavy words. It's disliked. So Sa'al al Qadi al Muhamiya. Oh, here we're pronouncing a fatha for the Isam al Qus. 
because this is more close we say it and every word that's more Arab and at the end of it is a yeah that, that, is, that sticks to it and here there's a yeah that sticks to it so this is a manqus, but the fatha shows yes the fatha can show because it's not thaqil it's not heavy it's khafif it's light on the tongue so here we say al-muhami is in the position of be bihi because sa'ala landed upon what word? al-muhamiya the act of the verb asking landed upon the word al-muhamiya so what makes it maf'ulun bihi and we know maf'ulun bihi is grammatical position as being mansub so what's the alamat nasbihi here? the sign of being mansub? al-fathatu al-zahira al-noticeable fatha the vowel fatha is very noticeable here so we say sa'al al-qadi al-muhamiya we pronounce it on the yeah. An, an il jani, an il jani, an, it's a particle or half jar, asking, it's a, for a word that's meaning about, an, it's regarding, right? Al jani, so this an is connected to the word sa'ala. It's like mediating for it. He's asking, an, asking about. So when you want to use the word asking about, you say, سَأَلْتُ an. I asked about. It's good for you to know uh, the prepositions and the particles that go with certain verbs. You can't just come up with your own prepositions and your own uh, words. That's why a lot of people get corrected by the mashayikh. They just come with their own Preposition for a verb. He'll be like, Sa'ala ala. You know, he just brings his own verb and his own uh, part preposition, harf. And yes, they're interchangeable, some letters, but it's good to stick to the standard. Anil jani, anil jani. The jani is the criminal. So the judge as al muhami, the lawyer. An al jani regarding the criminal. So al jani here, we know it's in the position of being majroor because there's a harf jar an that entered upon it. So it makes it majroor. So we say alamatu jarrihi al kasratu al muqaddara. The kasra here, it is muqaddara, meaning there's an estimated kasra, mana'amadhuriha, what prevented it from being shown. And noticeable is a thiqal. You have to say this word. When someone asks you to uh, explain why you've given it that is muqaddara, you have to say for manqus thiqal, heaviness. And for al maqsur ta'adhur, that is impossible or improbable. So he says, تقول, you, you would say, في إعراب, يعني في here means concerning, إعراب, the إعراب, هذه الكلمات of these words, القاضي فاعل مرفوع علامة رفعه ضمة مقدرة, المحامي مفعول به منصوب علامة نصب فتحة ظاهرة, because it's خفيف as light. الجاني مجرور بعن علامة جري كسرة مقدرة Some say that when it comes to when it's مجرور some say it's an actual كسرة uh, it's a ظاهرة can I say that? Look at that the word right here. Anil uh, jani. They said there's a custom right there. Jani. Uh, it has uh, basically kasra. Or sorry, this is for another example for janin. What's that? When it has a tanween. But what's coming with that is going to come up with note, inshallah. There's a footnote at the bottom. Number one, 
So this is relating to ism al-maqsur. Idha nuwina al-maqsur huzifat al-alifu fi nutq l-iltiqa'i sakinain nahu al-fata fatan. وحين إذا تقدر العلامات على الألف المحذوفة نحو اتصل مصطفى بفتح ضحى. so when the ism maksur takes a tanween, the alif is erased in the pronunciation. before we used to say al fata, but now when it's tanween we just say fatan. the alif is written. But it's not pronounced. Why is it uh, not pronounced? Because there's uh, a collision of two sukuns, so you won't pronounce it anymore. It's, it's gone, but it's written still. And they, they say the reason why it's still written there, so you can actually notice the word. If you were to remove that, uh, the actual alif, kitabatan, you wouldn't identify the word, you won't recognize it. So there then, you would say the alamat irab, the signs of the irab of it. You want to say ala akhirihi at the end of it. You would just say ala alif al mahdufa upon the erased letter. Even though it's not erased, but it's yani it's erased in pronunciation wise. Nahu it tasala mustafan bifatan duhan. So mustafan is fa'il or fu'a. We say, وعلامة رفعه ضمة مقدرة على الألف المحذوفة not على آخره you know but we say على الألف المحذوفة upon the alif that was erased same thing with فتن الضحان that's a little side benefit you don't necessarily have to have that طيب, uh, the brothers don't mind we complete the last page quickly or we stop here stop here I'll complete the last page because it's related. Hmm? Or any questions that we've taken so far? Tfadl. Why does something take Alif Maktura instead of regular Alif? Taib, so why does uh, the question, why does something take Alif? Uh, uh, like for example, the alif lazima, you mean? At the end of a word? Okay, good question. Uh, s- certain words, uh, they, are, they've been uh, written, they've been written, as some of them said, mahbus anil mad. They've been cut off and restrained. Having a further med like like with a Hamza. But the actual word, the actual word has to more have to do with sarf That question more relates to sarf because they say that alifs, some of them. Uh, it's munqaliba an aslin. It's a, it's it turned over from original letter. For example, al fata that alif there is originally a ya. Because when you try to dualize it, when you try to make it a dual, what are you going to say? Al fatayan. But when it's singular, tanqalib alif, it becomes an alif. So they say for certain uh, benefit for the actual word, it has to stay like this. It has to stay like this for singular. Do you have any other questions? Hold on. How do you know that uh, Al-Asa has a Sahara that is not there in the Islam language? Okay, good question. Uh, the one of the ways to identify a word, like a brother is asking, how do you know uh, that Asa is Mu'rab and is not Mabni? The way you would identify a word is through uh, the conjugation of it or the changing. So when you put it to uh, to test in a sentence, you will see that at times it changes. So like, let us uh, 
uh, initially look to the word. The root of it. And asa, when you dualize it, when you change it, you see that it's not actually a mebni word. It's not actually a mebni word. But it's more so that there's an alif there that's a preventative. Alif there, that's a preventative. Because they say without the alif, the word becomes mu'rab all of a sudden. When you actually put it to test and you put it in certain scenarios where the alif is not there, maybe you change it and you dualize it or you do something to it, you see that it just becomes mu'rab all of a sudden. They said if a word is mebni, it wouldn't do that. So the way you can identify if a word is actually mebni or mu'rab is when you put it to test in certain circumstances. You can see that. And if a word is a mebni, whether you ch- dualize it, whether you change it to a musanna, whether you change it to singular, whether you change it to this, huwa yalzam halat al wahid. It sticks to one positioning. That's called mebni. So here we say there's a preventative of this alif. That's why it's, it's called alif al lazima. Man amin zuhuriha at taazur. Tola. This is Ma'arab. That's a beautiful example, mashallah. Yani, uh, when they say you go back, the, what determines it is the actual root of the word. Actual root of the word. And they, some of them say the actual origin of this alif is a ya. Yeah. That's why. Uh, the root, root word, or the, some some of them refer to the word asa as isri. Hmm? So they said it's actually yani isriyun or asayu. So because of uh, when you go back to the actual root of the word, you will be able to identify that it's mu'rab, something that's declinable, changed, and its origin is mu'rab, and it's not mebni. It's not mebni. In all cases, you can somewhat identify, but with the alif and lazima of how it is. Like for example, mustashfa, al fata, al asa. Right away, when you look at the word, you can see that it's not a mabni mu'rab issue. It's mana min zuhuriha ta'adhur. Right, that's it. That's the way you would identify. Tfadam. No, good question. So, a brother's asking the definition of the author, Al Manqus, it is what has akhiruhu ya un lazima. So, this by default takes out anything that has wa un lazima. Wa un lazima. So, they said uh, if it has wa un lazima, it doesn't fall into the definition of Al Manqus. And doesn't meet his, uh, these uh, restrictions. So it has to have yaun lazima. And they say with the condition that is maksur ma qabla, or the kasr before it. Do you have any questions? Tafadl. Uh, Nuwina, it means to take a tanween. Nawana, you know, we know, to put a word to have a tanween. Tanween. What's Tanween? Like for example, Fathatain, Dhammatain, Kasratain. Any other questions? So we'll quickly uh, complete this part here. We'll read it fast and then we'll explain it more in the next class. وَقَدْ يَكُونَ الْمَنْقُوسُ مَحْذُوفَ الْيَا نَحْوُ ذَهَبَ قَاضٍ إِلَى مُحَامٍ تَقُولُ فِي عِرَابْ هَاتَيْنَ الْكَلِمَتَيْنَ قاض فاعل مرفوع علامة رفعه ضمة مقدرة على الياء المحذوفة محام مجرور بإلى علامة جره كسرة مقدرة على الياء المحذوفة. طيب now he says continuing with the topic of اسم منقوس 
وَقَدْ يكون and also it could occur it could happen basically الْمَنْقُوسُ that is a manqus uh, the ya of it at the end of it be erased it was there but it just became erased for example نَحُوْ ذَهَبَ قَاضٍ إِلَى مُحَامٍ so we see that the original word is qadi, right? But we erased uh, the ya and we put in replace of it tanween. We put in replace of it tanween. So that uh, they call that tanween. Tanween awal is like a tanween for replacement. It replaced the ya. Because whenever you take away from a word like this, you have to give some sort of substitute. Ila to Muhammad. So the judge went to the lawyer. So you say in the Arab of these two words, تقول في الإعراب هاتين الكلمتين in these two words قاض is a فاعل مرفوع is a position of فاعل act of the verb and the علامة رفعه ضمة مقدرة الضمة that is estimated because it's not noticeable على الياء المحذوفة upon the ياء that was erased instead of saying على آخره we say upon the ياء that was erased it's supposed to be there like that's where that's the actual positioning but the ياء is erased محامن مجرور بإلى مجرور وتحرف جر إلى علامة جره كسرة مقدرة على الياء المحذوفة. So we say that here it's given an estimated كسرة because it's مجرور but منع من ظهورها الثقل. What prevents from the signs of Arab being shown for اسم منقوص? You say منع من ظهورها الثقل. What does ثقل mean? That is ثقيل. It's heavy. So he said, what prevent, the preventative here is heaviness. Heaviness on the tongue. The mudaf ila ya al-mutakallam. Nahu zamili. What is made mudaf to a word that is, becomes ya mudaf ila, which is meaning ya mutakallam here, first person pronoun as me. So saying zamili, like my my uh, colleague or uh, classmate تُقَدِّرُ فِيهِ الْعَلَامَاتِ الثلاث All three grammatical positions مَرْفُوَ مَنْسُوَ مَجْرُور have an estimated uh, ruling نَهُ دَعَى جَدِّي أُسْتَاذِي مَعَ زُمَلَائِي Masha, the examples the author gives is amazing yani, some point and these examples are fit for what he's demonstrating دَعَى he called past tense verb Jeddi, my grandfather, or my grandfather called. So it's the fa'il, the act of the verb. Ustadi, my professor, ma'azumalai, alongside my colleagues or my classmates. Tukul fi Arab hadi kalimat Jeddi, or Jeddi, is the fa'il marfu' the grandfather. And the alamat rafi'ihi dhamma muqaddara. The sign of it being marfu' is a dhamma that's estimated. Really what prevented it from being seen, mana' min zuhuriha, in shigal al-mahal bi harakat al-munasibah. That area of the ending of the word was preoccupied with giving a suitable vowel for the ya. In shigal al-mahal bi harakat al-munasibah. That's what you say. Because what suits the ya? The pronoun, first person, yeah, mutakallim. Kasra, right? What suits a yeah, brothers? A kasra. So we had to put in that area a kasra on the last part of the word to suit the ya that comes after it. So this is the reason why the irab is not noticeable. So here we say, مَنَعْ مَنْ ذُهُرِهَا عَنْ شِغَالِ الْمَحَلْ بِحَرَكَةِ الْمُنَاسِبَةِ What prevented it? What's the preventative affair? It is that this area was preoccupied with giving a suitable vowel for the ya. Ustadi maf'ulun bihi mansub alamat nasbi fathatun muqaddara man amal zuhuriya an shighal al mahal bi harakatin munasiba. Zumala'i mudaf ilayhi majrur alamat jarrihi kasratun muqaddara. Same thing. And some uh, here side benefit. It says here, uh, footnote number one. تثبت ياء المنقوص في ثلاث حالات وهي أن يكون محلا بألف ولام نحو القاضي 
باء أن يكون مضافا أنه قاضي مكة جيم أن يكون منصوبا أنه سألت قاضيا يرى بعض النحاة أن هذه كسرة ظاهرة طيب أوكي okay. this is a, the first footnote is number one let's take that one first تثبت يا المنقوص في ثلاث حالات like now when we're speaking about when is the ya erased and when is it not erased for isim manqus, right? We spoke about being erased. But let's, how do we identify when it's going to be erased and when it's not? It says here, first scenario, if it has alif and lam on the word, that's, that's manqus, isim manqus, then we know that ya has to remain. So we say al qadi, because we can't have a tanween and also a qal, an alif and lam at the same time, brothers. So you can't say al qadin, right? Number number next one, and you can mudafan. When it's mudaf, and the word after it comes mudaf ilay, two words to make one word, and it will have to have a yeah. You can't make it have a tanween, listener. Why is that? Because a word that is mudaf cannot take a tanween. Jim, and you can mansuban. That. We are already taking this, that because of its being light on the tongue, when it's in the state to be mansub, the fatha shows, right? The next footnote, number two, where it says, ila uh, muhamin. Is that the footnote? Oh, sorry, zumala'i. For zumala'i, some people say that the uh, Arab here for, for Majroor, it is not Muqaddara uh, because there's already a Kasra at the end of it. They said it's allowed that you can have a Kasra for two things. Kasra for the Arab, Zumala'i, and also this Kasra is for it to be suitable for the Yab after it. So I'm saying this is kasratun zahira. You don't say it's muqaddara, estimated. But your correct opinion, you can't have a vowel for two things. You can't have a vowel for two things. So it's muqaddara, that's a stronger opinion. We'll stop with this amount. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu ala ilaha, and we'll stop with it.